I will briefly talk to you about uh, routines and triggers and events in PHP MyAdmin, as well as the server status monitor. OK, now, so who knows what a start procedure is? Raise your hand. OK, we, everybody knows, so maybe I don't even need to explain. But well, anyway, um, it's a feature of a relational database that allows you to store a bunch of SQL code on the server and then just call that code to uh, execute it. OK, so in our employees database, we can navigate to the Routines tab, which encompasses both start procedure and stored functions. There's a few subtle differences, but I won't get into that. Now, to create a new routine, you can click on this link over here, and it brings up a dialog where we can fill in all the necessary data. But at the risk of this sounding like a cooking show, here's one that I prepared earlier. Here we go. It's a very simple one. It's called tutorial. And we have two parameters. We have an input parameter and an out parameter. And basically what this does is take the input parameter, increment it by one, and then uh, put it into the output parameter. So that's a very simple one. But stored procedures can be very complex. And they could even be hundreds of lines of code. OK, next we have triggers. Um, Triggers are, again, a feature of MySQL that allows us to execute a bunch of SQL code whenever a certain event happens in the database. A very common use case for this is logging. So for example, I will show you that we have a trigger, again, in the employees database in the departments table. Now again, this can be found here in the Triggers tab. And if we have a quick look at it, what we can see is that after every insert in the department's table, it will execute the code that you can see in the definition text area. And what it will do is it will insert a new row of data into the log table that will tell us when a particular department has been added to the system. So if I go ahead and insert a new row into the departments, and we put in as a number one, two, three, four, and we call it computing. So a new row has been inserted into the departments table. And we can go and quickly check if we have a new row in the log table. And as you can see, here it is. And in the timestamp, we can see that it's been inserted, well, roughly about now. And that's all about triggers. And moving on, we have events. Events, well, are something that allows us to execute, again, a bunch of SQL code, either at some point in time, or we can set up recurrent events that are triggered at selected intervals of time. Now, you can access them directly here, or we can also go to the database level, and we will have a tab for events. Here it is right there. And we can see that there is an event already there. However, it will not be executed. Because in order for the events to work, the event scheduler must be enabled. Now, if you don't own the actual MySQL server, that might be a problem, because enabling it uh, requires the super user privilege. So here we have it. It's been enabled. And if we have a <laughs> quick look at this event here, we can see that it's an event that will clear the log table at the end of this month for, for some reason. And we can also have recurrent events, like I mentioned earlier. And so if we go here into the add event, and we change the event type from one time to recurring, we can see that the dialog changes slightly. And we can configure when we want the event to be running from to. And we can also specify how often we, we would like to execute it. Now, that would be all about events. And again, moving on, 
I will just briefly show you the, our server's status monitor. Now it can be reached from the status tab on the home page, and it will show on the, on the first page some statistics about the traffic and the connections and the processes of the server. Now there are also sub-tabs here that show other information. For example, the query statistics allows you to see what type of query is actually being run on your server. So here we can see that the most often executed query is of type select. But if we scroll down here, we can also see a pie chart which visualizes that data nicely. Another thing that we can see here is the status variables. And we can use the, the information that is shown on this page to perhaps diagnose any performance issues that we might be having on the server. Also, we have a monitor tab. Now, this is uh, a fun feature because we get to see some charts that show us in real time what is happening to our server. Now, in the settings, we can change the refresh rate and the number of columns. Here, I have to change it because three don't actually fit on this tiny screen. So, we're just going to go for two. Now, we can see what is happening at the moment here. We can see um, the amount of queries that are being run, the amount of connections and the processes that are running, the traffic, system CPU usage, swap, and system memory. But you can also add your own charts. And um, to make this more useful, we can go into the setup page and change a few settings on the server. Now, this will slightly slow down the server, so as soon as you've finished analyzing what is happening on the server, you might want to turn this back off. Okay, excellent. Now, what I'll do is I will just open up another table somewhere, and that should trigger a select statement. As we can see, there's been a spike right here, both in the traffic tab and in the questions tab. And what we can do at this point, we can get actually more information about what has been happening here. If we just click and drag, and we can select a particular time span. Okay, that didn't quite work out too well. Let's try this again. Here we go. Now we can pull from the log what kind of queries have been running at that particular time? We can see there's been 87 select queries. And if we jump to the log table, it'll show us the information about the queries. Now, if you actually click on the individual queries, you can run an analysis that will tell you if it's possible to improve uh, the performance. And last but not least, we have the advisor tab, which runs a set of predefined rules against the server to diagnose um, if there might be any kind of problems on the server. Okay, and this actually concludes our talk on the PHP MyAdmin.